CB500X, Honda's budget priced adventure bike that is a hoot on the road and easy dirt roads too. I own one, I've also trawled piles of vids, reviews and forum posts to explore the good, the bad and the ugly points. Let's start with the good. It's so cheap. Like most Japanese bikes, it's not made in Japan anymore. It's actually made in Thailand, but it still features Honda's reliability at a bargain basement price. The Honda 250 Rally and Kawasaki 300 Versus are cheaper, but you get way more engine with the CB500X. It's great for road and easy dirt roads. Essentially the CB500X is a road bike with a few mods to make it an adventure bike. Just. The models up to 2018 probably slot in around here. The 2019 models and on got the larger 19 inch front wheel and a bit more suspension so they would slot in around here. It loves twisty mountain roads, commuting and as said smooth dirt roads. Into serious adventure riding though, really look elsewhere. Unless you deal with that exposed sump and radiator, low ground clearance, very ordinary road oriented suspension and road bike ergonomics. A seat height of 81 centimeters makes it brilliant for short riders. Remember the 2019 did get a bit taller due to that bigger front wheel though. Beginner rider or new to adventure riding, you will find the power delivery is perfect. Very linear, no surprises. Experienced riders enjoy it too, unless they are expecting top end performance. This will not be your style of bike. It's extremely economical and will get either one or two people around with a minimum of fuss but you will need to do more gear changing than say a 650 of course. Remember too this is only a 470cc engine. It seems Honda has started that stupid, stupid European tradition of exaggerating their engine capacity. Sigh. A little Honda has good service intervals at 12,000 kilometers for oil changes, 24,000 for major services. Okay, so what's not so good about the CB500X? Well look, generally it's super reliable, but the only obvious known issue is a small number of coolant leaks reported over the years. Causes mainly seem to be various bolts not tightened correctly and a few water pump failures. It's hard to find very recent cases though. It may all be fixed in later models. It's cramped for taller riders. Me, I am well over six feet tall. I have to fold myself into the bike. It's easily fixed though. I installed the lowering night design foot pegs, repadded the seat for 15 bucks with some vinyl and furniture foam, then put in some rocks pivoting handlebar risers. The riding position is very road bike oriented. Fine if that's your thing but try standing to get over some rough ground and it's all set up wrong. Traditional adventure riders will find the foot pegs are too far back, too high and the bars are too far forward. The night design lowering foot pegs are also further forward which can alleviate this problem. And the rocks pivoting risers bring the bars back if needed for an upright riding position. The gearbox can be clunky when changing lower gears, especially on new bikes. It's made worse by very low gearing as well. Sports oriented riders will like the acceleration, but many adventure riders go one tooth higher on the front sprocket. Some even go two teeth higher, but you do need to trim things a bit to fit the 17 tooth sprocket. The clunky changes from first to second are a lot better then. Some riders have said their valves tightened up before the recommended 24,000 km service. If your bike starts running rough, keep this in mind. Most riders don't seem to hit this problem though. Doing a lot of dirt, the road oriented front fender is way too short. Buy a front fender extension to keep muck off the engine. The sump is very exposed. Consider some form of protection there too for a lot of dirt riding. 
you may also want to install an extra flap to stop mud and dirt being sprayed over your rear shock. The suspension, very ordinary, as you would expect on a budget priced bike. Any spirited riding on or off-road will find the limits really quickly. Get it modified or just keep the speed down and then it does an acceptably adequate job. Just. Doing a lot of dirt roads, there's a very good chance you won't like the small 17 inch front wheel on the 18 and earlier models. But there is an easy fix. Many are buying the high profile Shinko 705 which brings the rolling diameter much closer to the 19 inch front. You will need to drill new holes to mount your front fender higher and the extra weight of the tyre may slow your steering down a bit, although of course many prefer that. Short riders, remember it will make the bike sit higher though. Riders with small hands may find the clutch lever is too far out. This is easily fixed with an aftermarket lever. Some riders and pillion passengers report the seat is too hard for extended rides. Me, I find it fine for a morning ride, but yeah, you may want an aftermarket seat if regularly doing day rides. Finally, a very stupid design flaw. If you replace the countershaft seal, it has a built-in flange. It can only be installed from the inside, requiring a complete engine strip down. Dumb, dumb and dumber. Most riders get around this by filing the flange down and just fitting it the normal way you do with most countershaft seals. So that's it guys, an awesome little bike. And don't be deterred by this list of issues. The vast majority of owners love their bikes and never hit any issues. I just like to dig deep to discover all the known issues. Check out everyone else's reviews too and ride safe.